what we're working on here is a rail switch and I'll explain that in a second. The switch is going in right at the 1600 in order to have service going off to the drift to the right where the new work is going to take place. In other words, our initial drilling and blasting. In order to install the switch, we have to first cut out the old section of rail before it can place the new section in that's got the arm of the switch running off of it. And sometimes it takes a little bit of tinkering and cutting to get it to fit perfectly. It doesn't always fit just perfectly and smoothly as we would like. Working with 100-year-old rail, we often have to fabricate things on the spot. So here they're creating a connector, otherwise known as a fish plate for the rail. So they just finished working on this fish plate. He's just banging out some imperfections now. And then you know, dip it in the water and cool it down. Now they're just tightening down the bolts on the custom fish plate to connect the old section of track to the new switch. The next step in the process is to bend the rail below the switch in order for it to be able to accommodate the new turn you're creating. To accomplish that, we use a tool known as a Jim Crow, which he just put into place there. And with a lot of muscle, it literally bends the rail to your desired shape. If you look at the end of the rail, you can see it bending when he pushes down on it. See what I mean? The rail is, yeah, it's heavy and thick, but it's also surprisingly flexible. The metal, especially in rail that's more than 100 years old, has a memory. As you've got to beat on it with a hammer after you've bent it to avoid having it snap back into place after you remove the Jim Crow. When you're bending the rail for something like a switch, you're going to have to bend it in more than one place. So it's a good job for the new guys or your strongest guys, because it's a lot of work. We've got the Victaulic connectors in. These are for connecting the compressed air line. Been doing some painting, as you can see. This is one of our resident squirrels. We put sunflower seeds out for them, and you can see they've got the routine down pretty well now. We've got this equipment stage here to take up to the mine. These are our latest purchases. You can see we've got two ore cars here and a mucker. This is definitely going to ramp up our productivity. It's going to be brutal to unload this up there, but it'll definitely be interesting to see how much more we can get done with all this. I'm looking forward to using this mucker rather than doing all that by hand. And then over here, we've got a bunch of ventilation pipe that just arrived, staged, and we're going to start taking this up in sections and get this in so air can be pushed into the mine or sucked out as needed. There's a lot more to come, but this is what we're starting with. Well, we've got the ore cars and the mucker up to the mine now, but we're going to have to reconfigure some things because those are side dumping ore cars. But the ore car we have now is a front dumping one. So we were going to reconfigure this anyway, but I think the longer term plan, we're going to bring the rail out here around through there and sort of loop it around. We're gonna put a waste rock pile there, I think. Assuming the Forest Service uh, allows that because we already have the existing waste rock pile here, which I think I've shown before. But for some reason, the Forest Service doesn't want to change the geographic footprint of this, even though this is all waste rock pile here. They want us to make a new one over there. So, I don't know. You hear that? That's that pump ripping away. And you can barely hear it. That is awesome. I'm used to the fire engine pumps that are really loud. Got the water. There's two separate lines running out here. 
This is for fire protection. We've got a hose running out for the workings here. And we also have stuff up the hill where the hose is running right now. In this area, fires are a constant threat. So we figured it'd be a good idea of a system. And it does something to all the water pouring out of the mine as well. So seems like a win-win all around. This is a, uh, I'm not sure I pronounced it. It's Flight F-L-Y, oh man, I'm gonna forget it. F-L-Y-G-Y-T, it, it's um, owned by Xylem. This is the control panel for that pump. You just flip this over to hand to turn it on. And of course this is powered by our generator over there. And the power lines run along here toward the pump and the pump is just, just back there. See, we've been doing some work down here. This is uh, fire resistant paint. I haven't put it to test, but it's supposed to be fire resistant. Even though we just have the wood out here for a couple days before it goes underground and gets used, that couple days sitting out here, look how much it warps and bends. And splits too. See how badly that one split? All the snow is completely gone from across the way. It's hot now. So yeah, we're gonna have to get something set up to shade this, shade these timbers. Cause it's just ridiculous how, uh, how much this is warping and splitting. Mining is not just underground work, it's surface work as well, as I've tried to convey through these videos. What we're doing today is clearing brush for fire prevention. The forests here are wildly overgrown because there have not been forest fires coming through on a regular basis as there used to be before they started suppressing all the fires. And so if you look at this massive accumulation of brush around us here, this is not natural at all. If you read the early accounts of pioneers that came out, there were a few widely spaced trees and grass and wildflowers in between with few scattered bushes here and there. You did not have this impenetrable jungle of growth that you see now. So we're clearing this out for fire prevention. The powder magazines go up here and we need to have it very safe around them. I just hosed down this area with that pump I showed earlier. You can see we ran a line up the hill here. I hosed things down uh, just to get a little extra level of fire protection because I'm going to be using the chainsaw and I don't want to hit a rock or something and have a spark go off and start a fire because that would not be a good look. So just hose it down. I'm going to get busy with the chainsaw here and keep pushing this, this back a bit and... Do that probably for the rest of this week, unfortunately, because it's blazing hot right now. So I just cut a bunch of that brush down, so now I'm chipping it up. This is incredibly satisfying.
Here's a view of what was cleared out. This is the completed job. All smoothed out and nice looking. Per the regulations, we've got to have the space cleared out. Let's look at portal number two.